Hi everyone, I'm Zach, and I'm coming to you from the palatial Foundry Cast Studios, high atop our gleaming skyscraper. Welcome to the GM's Chair. This is going to be a series of vlogs exploring concepts and my own experiences in being a GM or a DM in tabletop RPGs. Now, as a GM, I'm always looking to get better, and one of the best ways I've found to improve my game is through uh, learning from other GMs, hearing their experiences and getting insight from the way that they uh, build character NPCs, put together plots control the player party, things like that. I thought I might as well share my own experience as well, uh, so that if you are a new or a longtime GM, hopefully maybe I can help you a little bit, uh, or at the very least I can show you what not to do as a GM. If nothing else, hopefully this will give you some inspiration, uh, spark some, some conversation and some introspection in your own mind. In this first episode, I'm going to be talking a little bit about a very fun experience I've had recently in running a brand new game for a brand new group of players. Specifically, I ran a one-shot of Pathfinder uh, for some of my friends that approached me. They knew I was a GM and they wanted to play Pathfinder and get into that setting or get into that game. So I uh, ended up with three players. Uh, one of which was fairly experienced. They had played in a couple of games before, had a couple of different characters. Uh, the second player had played 3.5, D&D 3.5, about a decade ago. Uh, and since Pathfinder is derived from 3.5, there was some experience there. The third player, though, was completely brand new, not just to Pathfinder, but to RPGs as a whole. So uh, definitely a mixed group of experience levels. Uh, but it ended up being a, a lot of fun. Now, I had several different challenges. I'm going to touch on some of those keys. Uh, the first was one that I'll actually pursue in some other videos as well, and that is the adventure and the setting in which to play. The easiest thing, and in retrospect, it's the thing I should have done, is to use a pre-existing setting and a pre-existing adventure uh, for this group. That takes a lot of the creative burden off of me as a DM. It allows me to focus more on the players, helping them learn the rules and get into character. Uh, however, I'm both stupid and ambitious, and that's a dangerous combination. It means that I decided not just to build my own adventure, but to build my own campaign setting from scratch. Uh, I'd had this idea for a couple of years of a campaign setting, and I decided this was as good a time as any to start putting it together. I'm happy with the way it ended up, but it's been a huge amount of work added to, and it, it delayed the start of the game a little bit more than I would have liked. So we started uh, with creation of characters, and I had a couple of options here. I could have just straight up created characters for them to play, uh, or even created a group of characters and allowed the players to choose, pick and choose which one of those they wanted to play. And that has some advantages, um, you know, for a group of new players, it helps them not worry so much about the rules. It helps them kind of jump into the game a little bit faster. Uh, if you have a player who might be a little shy or not as into the role-playing aspect, Aspect of it, it helps them a little bit, and they might not be as good at coming up with a character concept. Uh, so, giving them something to play is a little easier. Uh, it also means that uh, the players would have had non gimped characters, they would have been built correctly and ready to deal with any challenge I might have thrown to them. Although, where's the fun in that, right? Uh, however, I decided to go the other direction. Uh, especially for the brand new player, I wanted to make sure they had as complete an experience as possible in playing role-playing games. And I think one of the core concepts in RPGs is building your own character, creating a backstory, and going through all the steps and building them and getting into that character a lot. So I didn't want to deny that player that opportunity. So I made sure that uh, everybody had a chance to build. Uh, we actually did this pre-game. I uh, had a separate session where we all sat down we were building characters together and actually from a world building standpoint it was super helpful to have the chance to go through character concepts with them helped me explore the world I was building and also you know helped me come up with a couple of uh, unusual ideas I wouldn't have come up with before uh, so I, it helped uh, helped my job as a world builder a little bit as well uh, creating those characters together uh, it also helped me introduce start introducing at least some of the rules to them uh, some of the vocabulary getting them familiar with what to expect something as simple as me saying give me a perception check you know by building the character putting ranks in and explaining what those checks were but before we started the game we were ready to roll uh, but when the time came to actually play, I wanted to jump right in. I'm a big believer in learning by doing, and one of my biggest fears as a GM, especially with new players, is having them get bored. And I didn't want to sit there and explain rules out, because I know that's pretty boring for most people. I wanted them to jump right in. 
have a chance to uh, to learn the rules as they go. Um, so uh, that presented a couple of issues. You know, the the classic uh, conundrum as a GM of railroading versus open world. You know, do I put them on rails? Do I start them somewhere? Do I have them hit specific concepts I want them to learn? Do I have them move towards a goal exactly and get the exact experience I want them to have? Or do I plop them into an open world, give them the agency as a player to make the decisions they want? I think that's really important as a player that you learn that you can do different things if you want to. You can explore the world in the way that you want. So there's there's advantages and disadvantages of both styles of GMing and I think, you know, as a good GM, you're going to do both at different times, depending on the, the setting, the, the players, the group, the time, and the game, all those kinds of things. In this case, though, with a brand new group of players I and with brand new players to RPGs, I felt like I should go kind of the railroading side of things, not to an extreme, but to guide them a little bit more. And in fact, I actually took that literally. The game that we ran was set on a train, so they were literally on rails. Um, but that that's uh, train setting is very in keeping with the way that I tend to GM and that is I set a, a clear start point and I create sort of highlights key moments that I want to try and reach and then an end goal at the end uh, and my goal as a GM is to allow the players agency to reach those key points however they want to reach them and eventually reach the goal again however they want to get there I just want them to get there and if they skip one of the key points so be it. Uh, But that's sort of my style as GMing and so putting them on this train setting really really helped in that way. Uh, We started out uh, very simply, uh, gave them plenty of time to RP, to get together, to explore their characters, start getting used to talking in character, introduce one another, uh, gel as a party, and then as soon as I felt like they were starting to gel, I kicked them very quickly into a combat scenario. A very simple, very straightforward, very easy combat scenario. Uh, but by the end of that uh, encounter, so about maybe an hour and a half into the game, they had you know, made most of the roles they were going to need. They'd explored most of the rules that they were going to need to start really getting into Pathfinder. And at that point, I was able to kind of open things up and really let them uh, pursue the goals that uh, I had put in place. And for the most part, the players understood those goals and pursued them. Um, but what was interesting is, of course, as we always say, no good plan survives contact with the player party. Uh, so they went about those goals in ways that I didn't expect and meant that there was, you know, on the fly improvisation on my part as a GM, which led to some really fun moments. Uh, in the end, uh, we got to where we wanted to be. You know, they befriended an NPC who then died in combat tragically, and so there was emotional moments. Uh, they started unraveling a mystery. They, for the most part, defeated the bad guys at the end. Um, so it, the the adventure as a whole went really well. Uh, but more importantly, the the, the single goal that I was achi- uh, hoping to achieve, I think we did. Everyone had fun. In my perspective, that's your number one job as a GM, is to make sure that your players have fun to the best of your ability. So I'm going to leave it here uh, for this video and stop there, but I'll be coming back to this game, I'm sure, uh, and plenty of other topics in the future. If you like this discussion, you have comments or questions about it, please reach out to me. You can leave a comment here on this video, or you can uh, seek me out on Twitter or uh, Facebook. Let me know how you enjoyed it, and if you uh, have any suggestions for future episodes, things like that. Uh, But for the future, please uh, tune in for another episode of the GM's Chair, where I'll explore another tabletop topic. And as always, thanks for watching. Hey, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And to see more from us, check out our website at thefoundrycast.com. And you can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thanks for watching.